Alright, it's me again, it's Felt, and we're back with more Final Fantasy XIV, this time we're talking about the Bojan Southern Front. Now, this is on the perspective of someone who got to rank 9 the first day, playing mostly by myself. There's an asterisk there that I will explain later. I will also say that there will be general spoilers for the Southern Front, so if you care about that, just be cautious going into this video. I will not be holding back on any spoilers that I have seen so far. But yeah. This is the Bojan Southern Front. I have the whole map unlocked, as you can see. As is apparent from the fact that I'm ranked 9, which you need to be ranked 8 to unlock the whole thing. So, I like Bojan. I think it's super, super good. I think it's really fun. It is a really great guy, grind, and you can tell I'm doing this off the cuff, can't you? Regardless, here are some pluses that I found about Bojan is that it is a super solo-friendly experience with an asterisk. Meaning that it is really easy to run around by yourself and still get progress. Joining Fates, super easy by yourself. And if you get into the critical events, like this one down here, you can literally just type in chat for someone to send you an invite, and nine times out of ten, someone will invite you to their party. So even though you're technically playing by yourself, you can just be joining and leaving random parties throughout the map however you need for personal progress for yourself to make things easier. Like, you can very easily get into an instance and be like, hey, who needs a rank 5 person for their party? And you'll probably get a couple of invites out of that. So while you can jump in and play solo, it's not exactly solo, if you know what I mean. So if you don't want to join parties, you'll just get a little less out of it, just because if nothing else, you won't be able to have actual teammates there to heal and shield and res you, basically. <laughs> now, Hagen... The grind is great. Grinding up your metal feels super good till about rank 5, when it starts getting really, really expensive to get to the next rank and the next rank and the next rank, and you start losing metal when you die. For those of you who don't know, metal is basically your XP in here. You get metal from doing the different events. The lower ones down here give a few hundred, these give up to like a thousand, and these give a thousand plus up here. So it's a pretty decent system overall. It just kind of feels weird to be losing it. And unfortunate, fortunately, though, you can kind of afford a death or two per public event that you get a part of, or as they call them, fates or skirmishes. They're basically fates, but they're called skirmishes because this is a war front. And so when you're getting like 1,800 or 2,000 medal from a thing and dying twice makes you lose like 200, it's still a net game. So dying's not a big deal. Now, here's a great system. The critical engagements, especially because they just go out to everybody that's in the zone, and you can just join however you like. I really like that, just because I can be up here in the northernmost area doing some of these skirmishes, fates, and getting a bunch of metal for myself, and a bunch of materials for the relic weapon, which I'll talk about in a second, and then one of those can pop up and be like, I want that for a chance at the relic weapon material from down here, because I'm not finished with those yet, and bam, jump down there and go, <laughs> that guy's getting attacked by something hardcore. I might have to help him in a second here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give him a hand. This is one of the weird things about it, is all the random adds that can attack you while you're in here, and they don't really have great tether distances. This is part one of those like downsides, is that it's really easy to get attacked by an ad and have them tether to you and follow you all the way across the map. It's not a big deal, because killing them can still give you stuff like clusters, and still give you stuff like your tortured memories, your sorrowful memories, but it's a little annoying. And now, I think this feels really good. I think this is a great feeling area. As someone who never got into Eureka, and never really could get into Eureka, both because I didn't like the leveling system, I didn't really feel like getting into it so late was worthwhile for me. I just, it feels really good. It feels really, really fun. It feels really interesting to be able to just do whatever I want in this zone once I hit rank 8. Now, about the ranks. You have access to the southern area, and only the southern area, until you hit 5. After 5, you get access to the middle zone here. And then after you hit rank 8, you get access to the upper zone. So you are kind of cordoned off into each of the zones, but there's so much to do in the southern zone and middle zones that, like, getting to rank 8, you almost don't feel like you need this extra zone up here. But it's really useful when you get past it, because it gives the most metal. Now, this is also a really good XP farm. My Dancer is something that I brought in here. I brought them in here at, I believe, 72. And as you can see, they went up three levels yesterday. 
without even really minding that much. There's an asterisk there again because I did some dailies for the pixies, but I rounded down. I got about two levels in here in a day. Easy. So it's pretty good XP considering I wasn't specifically only playing Dancer. It's really fun too because like I jumped to my Dancer, I have my level 80 kit. I don't have to have any skills as long as I've unlocked every skill up to level 70. 71 technically because you can't get in here before 71. As long as you've unlocked all your skills, you will have your full level 80 kit in here, so you can try out the job at level 80. And if you realize, oh, I'm not a huge fan of that, you know before you grind out those last eight levels or so. Could be better, could be worse. I still think it's a good system. Now, this is also currently a way to grind out for your relic weapon, if you were doing your relic weapon. As you can see, I have four one-tip of memory active over here. Which is... I need to get all of the memories from this zone. Now, Tortured Memories drop from the southernmost zone. Sorrowfuls drop from the middle zone. And then there's another one that drops from the top, but I haven't gotten any yet. I don't know if that's just unlucky or if I just haven't done enough skirmishes up here. But you need 20 of each for the weapon and one day of grinding without specifically hunting for them. Like, I, I, I wasn't being hyper-efficient about staying in the zones and spamming fates properly. I easily got 10 of each. And that was within, I want to say, about 6 to 8 hours of it being in the zone. So I got a third of what I need, because you need 20 of each. Now, I'm sure if you're more efficient than me, you come in with a squad, or you like immediately squad up upon coming in here, and you for your 3-hour timer, you just blast through fates as fast as possible. You could easily finish that in a day. Easily. But that's up to you. I think that's kind of fun as an area to just kind of run around in and have fun and kill time. And an easy way to level jobs that are level 71 plus. And here's the kicker, though. These memories are things you can get on other jobs. As long as you have picked up for want of a memory on a character that can make the relic weapon, you can play whatever job you want and still get the memories to drop. I think that's a really important thing, and I think that's a really cool thing. Two final things before I end the video. One, the story. Story's pretty heckin' good. If you watched my stream the other day, I was getting kind of zoned out, but I was also falling asleep in my chair because I had done six to eight hours of Bojan <laughs> in one day. But I think it's honestly a really good story. I think it's got a great start, and it's got some really great twists and turns. And... Highly recommend paying attention to it. Now, final thing, lost actions. Here's your lost finds holster. You get things throughout the day called lost fragments, forgotten fragments, forgotten fragments. Apologies for misnaming. I'm, I'm only a day in. You turn them in to your resistance appraiser vendor over here. I'm going to do this live because that way I can literally show off what happens. So I get these, I turn them in, I get things like all these lost actions that I now have access to. And so each one of these is a single use of lost actions that you now have in your lost finds cache, and then you can basically create yourself a little loadout here of lost actions that you can carry around, including all of these items that boost you in different ways, like boosting your damage. Uh, I believe one of these is, here we go, reduces healing potency by 70%, but increases damage by 100% for healers. So... Because you don't need as much healing in here, you can just be like, nah, I don't need to heal. I want double my normal damage numbers. But also, in case you haven't noticed, I've gotten, like, I've seen, like, three resistance recruitments show up while I've just been chilling in here. Which, is, which those give bonus metal and have a really good chance of dropping the forgotten freaking the memories. Apologies. Overall, I think this place is great. I think the lost actions are great. Because, as you can see, I now have access to all of these things. Like, I can pop this and for three minutes here... No, sorry, I misread that. That is not seconds, that is minutes. So for the entire time I'm in the front, one of these will give me a free raise. As long as I don't use it up. These can heal me over time. This gives me the damage buff. And there's also spells, of which you can slot two at once. Including stuff like having a cure on your damage dealers or tanks. As well as giving yourself a, a barrier that reduces physical damage by 10%. And then there's more that do crazier things, like chance of killing enemy. Like, 
giving yourself a big cure and a region over time, like right raising people, 100% of the target's HP, and weakness is removed. Now keep in mind, a lot of these spells have numbers of casts on them and are limited, but as you can see, the Lost Cure 3 here had 99 casts, and I went through 89 of them. So like, you get a lot of casts. Stuff like the Lost Protect though seems to be infinite use, which is really nice. I think it's a really solid system. It's a continuation of a Eureka system. At least that's what it's people who did Eureka were telling me. B. Overall, Bojan, great experience, great way to level, really neat story, really cool duty actions. Highly recommend it if you're playing 14 right now. That'll be it for the video. Remember to, to like, subscribe, bring ding the bell, I don't know, whatever people on YouTube say. And go follow me on Twitch too, because I play this game live over there. Twitch.tv slash Veltcrowd0955. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you guys in the next one.